in this episode, I will have a great conversation with a guy who has really done it all here in the Santa Clara Valley, Jeffrey Patterson, owner and winemaker of Mount Eden and Domain Eden Vineyards. We're going to talk to him about a lot of fun topics, including his winery's special connection to the Prince Harry and Meghan Markle wedding, and most importantly, his very special philosophy about grape growing and winemaking. Wine with Bill starts now. Welcome to Wine with Bill, and I'm Bill. Today we have a special guest with us, Jeffrey Patterson, the guy who does it all and has done it all for decades and decades. He is the owner and winemaker of Mount Eden Vineyard, as well as Domain Eden, situated in the Saratoga Foothill Mountains and in the, most importantly, Santa Cruz Mountains AVA. Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. Th thank, thank, thank you for being here. Well, let's just put it this way and we'll get right into it. Your both wineries, but especially Mount Eden Vineyards, have a pedigree history that goes back and back and back, whether yes. it be Paul Masson, whether it be Martin Ray. Give us a brief history and take us up to the present. Okay. I, I don't want to bore you with uh, too much detail, but the, the real essence of Mount Eden is born with Paul Masson immigrating from Burgundy, France in the 1880s, marrying into the family that owned Almaden, the Charles Lefranc family, and then kind of kind of parlaying that that um, position into buying all the land next door to us, which is called now called the Mountain Winery. It was originally called Palmasson. Yes, yes. Palmasson was from Burgundy, France. In Burgundy, France, the white is a Chardonnay, and the red is a Pinot Noir, and that's what he planted predominantly in his vineyard and he made sparkling wine, of all things. Started his winery in 1900, was very successful, was able to weather prohibition in the 1920s, early 1930s, and then in the mid-1930s, he eventually gets old, like we all do, <laughs> unfortunately. We progress, yes. <laughs> and he sells it to this uh, middle-aged man whom he knew as a child, Martin Ray. Martin Ray buys Paul Masson, uh, kind of a drastic career shift. He was a stockbroker, Martin Ray, and then he becomes a winemaker at the absolute nadir of California wine history after Prohibition ends in the 1930s, 1936. In the negotiations that Paul and Martin have to buy and sell, Paul suggests to Martin, he says, you should abandon your, your idea of buying my place. Instead, you should go next door to the mountain to the north, a little bit higher up, and plant your own vineyard, make your own wine, do your own thing. Martin was in no way ready to do that in 1936. He was a stockbroker. He had no, no knowledge about wine production. But he never forgot that suggestion. So six years later, Martin Ray still owns Palmasson. He sells it to Seagram's, the whiskey house from Canada. Yes. And he takes the proceeds from that sale and he does exactly what Paul suggested. He goes next door, buys the land on the mountain to the north, plants a Pinot Noir and Chardonnay vineyard, makes his first vintage in 1946, starts a winery in 1945, and makes estate bottled Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. So, to further extend the history, um, Martin Ray makes some brilliant wines, some absolute horrible wines, but he makes a lot of wines. He makes small amounts, but he makes wines every year from his vineyards. And then, in the 60s, he brings in partners. The, the partnership was cantankerous from the very get-go, and in the end, the partners in 1972, the partners take over the winery. They kind of excommunicate Martin and they rename the, the property Mount Eden Vineyards in 1972. This is our 
This is 2000. 50 years ago. This is 2022. Wow. This is our 50th anniversary of, of being Mount Eden Vineyards. But the winery goes back even further, another 30 years before that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you entered when? Was it what year did you start your intense uh, involvement? I got hit. I got, I got to Mount Eden in 1981, and uh, I was uh, very green. I, I had not made wine before in my life. I had a strong interest in wine, uh, studied it, went uh, to school at UC Berkeley, graduated in the mid-70s, went back to school at UC Davis uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, and got to Mount Eden in 81. They hired me as an assistant winemaker and then in, uh, at the end of 1982, I'd only been there 15 months, they hired me as the winemaker. And then I've been there ever since. Well, they're lucky to have you. And <laughs> I think you've gotten it right over the years. <laughs> let's, but, but let's talk about that progression. It's, it's been a long time and you, you do, you figured it out, but where, where were the vineyards located? What were the varietals that you first had when you arrived on the scene? So the original vineyards were about 25 acres. We now have about 40 acres. But they were these three um, significant French varieties, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon. Those were the ones that Martin Ray planted. Martin Ray kind of migrated into the, into the Bordeaux world of Cabernet in the mid-1950s. And so when we took over the vineyard, um, those were the three stalwarts, and they still are. If you, as you can see in this lineup, uh, we still make the same three varieties. We haven't ventured off into any. You haven't any, wavered into Malbec. You haven't gone into some other, other stuff. No, we're not. We're, we're more trying to perfect what we do. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. And we've expanded the vineyard somewhat as we could, but the land that we live on and work on is very, very steep. So we have a huge amount of land, and, which is typical in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and we have very few acres planted. We have about 300 acres of land at Mount Eden on this mountaintop, but only 40 are in vineyards because there isn't enough ground that's flat enough to farm. And I think the this, this steepness, as well as the other aspects of the terroir, is one of the main elements of the Santa Cruz Mountains AVA. Yes. Correct? Yeah. The yeah. Santa Cruz Mountain AVA is unique in the world because it's based on elevation. It's not based on soil type. It's not based on political boundaries. It's not based on watershed. Uh, it's based on this specific mountain range, and you have to be above the fog. And if you're above the fog, you're in. And you are because the elevation We're of in. your vineyard is, is what, 2,000 or so? The line varies around because it's, 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 it's a massive appellation in terms of land mass, but um, it's very small in terms of vineyard acreage. But generally speaking, the boundary is but between 500 to 800 feet. So if you're above that, that barrier, above the morning fog, then you're in the appellation. Good, good. Yeah. Well... I know that you pride yourself as a grape grower, let alone a winemaker, but what's your philosophy or philosophies that are help put all this wonderful wine <laughs> into these beautiful bottles and for everyone to enjoy? I've always told people, um, you know, winemaking, you know, is a fairly simple act. Um, you know, it's, it's been practiced for thousands and thousands and thousands of years all over the world. It's not complicated, but if you want to make wines that are uh, distinctive, long-lived, um, really fun, you know, uh, and especially long-lived, you got to pay a lot of attention to the details. And that really starts in the vineyard, ends in the winery, but um, you know, taking a very simple process like fermentation and paying infinite attention to the details of it, um, that's, that's kind of where, I, where I'm at. <laughs> you sound, in your, all your practices, whether it be grape growing or the winemaking, 
very assiduous. You, you, it's something that's very necessary to get it right and to get the most out of your grapes. I'm, I'm lucky as a winemaker because I work the same land every year. I don't, we don't change vineyard sources. We, we have our own vineyards. We have our estate vineyards. And they, you know, produce every year, you know, in various amounts. And so the raw material that I work with is consistent and I know it, I know it very, very well. I've been doing it for 40 You've years. You've been walking those slopes for a long time. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of winemakers, you know, in the industry of wine, of California wine or wherever, you know, there's lots of different wineries of different sizes and shapes. And, you know, the winemakers have to deal with varying sources of raw material, raw uh, 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 vineyard sources every year. And that's, that makes it more, much more challenging in a way because they don't know. They don't have control. I have ultimate control from pruning, cultivation, shoot thinning, spraying, harvest, everything. I, I have ultimate control over my vineyard sources, which makes um, my job a lot easier in a way because that there's no one to blame but myself. Well, it's a great advantage for, yes. for you. Yes. Not only your familiarity with, with, with the grapes, the soils, etc., but you've walked those steep hillsides yeah. forever. Yeah. I've planted them. Yeah. I, 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 every vine at Mount Eden, I, it, with a couple exceptions, I've planted myself. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Well, now, we should give some attention to Domaining Eden, which is a, obviously a, a more recent ac- acquisition. Could you tell us about that? So... In, in 2007, I'm, I'm driving myself to church on a Sunday morning, and in the back of my, this is in August, in the back of my mind, I'm kind of worried because, I'm, you know, the, we're, we're doing this and that and this and that, and I was running out of room. I was seriously running at, out of room. At Mount Eden. Running out of room at Mount Eden. Yeah. And I had just heard that a neighboring winery called Cinnabar that was for sale had just fallen out of escrow. Some some guy came up to the winery to, to see the place and he told me that and he had just been to Cinnabar and he's I asked him about it and he said, No, they're no they're they're still for sale. So this little light bulb came on in my head, you know, and I went to church and I raced home and I talked to my wife and I said, Honey, we should buy we should buy Cinnabar. She said, hmm, that's a great idea. So I called at that time my, my chairman. He said, yeah. So then we called a neighbor who's a, who's a, a real estate broker. He said, yeah, oh yeah, I'll be, I'll be your broker. And it all fell into place. Within three months, we closed escrow. Wow. Yeah, at the end of 2007. Wow. And it was great because a Cinnabar was built by the Mud family, and it was a beautiful, beautiful winery. It doesn't have this. It's got a lot of vineyards that we that we farm and make wine from. Uh, we make a, a second series of wines called Domain Eden, that are not being presented here, but um, uh, the winery was just this turnkey winery that allowed me to move in in the harvest of 2008, and poof. It was it was golden. So did you relocate or refocus your production aspects yeah. to the Domain Eden facility? Yeah. So so the way we're organized now is um, all of our red grapes, Pinot Noir, and Cabernet Sauvignon, all go to Domain for fermentation because okay. it has a beautiful uh, fermentation room, you know, with beautiful temperature controlled tanks and clean and organized nice all of our chardonnay goes back to mount eden all all three major all three of the main chardonnay wines we make go back to mount eden in our cave that we built in 91 and then the upper cellar which was below my home um is now relegated to uh, the the even year vintages of Cabernet Sauvignon because okay. Cabernet spends two years in the cellar, so we don't have quite enough space to do everything at Domain, so we, we kind of leapfrog back and forth. 
So we have three sellers, <laughs> three sellers, um, and two wineries on two mile dirt roads. <laughs> A good combination. <laughs> it, it sounds like it's working. Yeah. Well, can we talk about and maybe go through some of some of sure. the, the the bottles that you sure. uh, brought and any you pick the order, uh, Jeffrey. But I, I will say this: our viewers and listeners love to hear about the special characteristics of each yeah. of each wine. Yeah. And knock on wood, we can get some uh, special. Maybe wine pairings recommendations from you. Yeah, for food with food. So, the first two wines are the uh, the the estate uh, Chardonnay Pinot Noir. So, when you say estate bottle, it's important to realize what that means. That's a very strict labeling requirement that uh, the the government imposes. It means that you grow, age, ferment, age, bottle in one place. Nothing from another source. All in one, all in one place. Okay. That's called estate bottled. Um, so these two wines are probably our most historic wines, uh, the, the estate Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, because they go back to those first vintages of Martin Ray back in the, in the 1940s. And I believe uh, these are the uh, longest lineage um, estate Chardonnay Pinot Noir outside of Burgundy, France. Wow, wow, pretty amazing. That is right in the, right in our backyard. The wines are. You should put a plaque up or something right there. <laughs> <laughs> I could. I've been saying it for a long time. <laughs> but these two wines, they're uh, very long lived. They age 25, 30 years, no problem, in a good in a good bottle cellar. Uh, they're made in a very conventional way. They're the Chardonnays barrel fermented. Uh, the Pinot Noir is barrel and, and barrel aged. The Pinot Noir is tank fermented with whole clusters, meaning a percentage, about a third of the, of the uh, grapes are not crushed. They're just put in the tank whole along with the grapes that are destemmed. Uh, they're all aged in relatively new French oak, uh, French oak barrels. Um, they tend to have more of a French style in that they're... Um, fruitiness is a little more reticent. They're a little okay. more what I call soil-based wines um, that age incredibly well. Uh, good acidities, low pH, good tannins, and the Chardonnay included. Um, and they they go well with food because the alcohols are like 13.5. They're, they're not high, they're not high alcohol. Level, yeah. They're not high alcohol wines. They're grown on a windswept mountaintop 14 miles from the ocean, cool climate, uh, old vineyards, old budwood, old DNA of the of the of the vines is taken from Palmasan back in the late 1890s from France to his vineyard to Mount Eden. They're different. They don't they don't taste um, like you know your modern California style. Which is very ebullient, rich, fairly high alcohol. They're they're more subtle than that. They uh, they're I always say they're more soil based than fruit based. And that's an important distinction. That's yeah. that's the easiest, most succinct way I know of describing them. And uh, they're very consistent. I mean, same vineyards. Same guy making them every year, year after year after year. It's so there's a consistency of style. The style doesn't change. The vintages change, so there's a subtle difference within the context of the vintage. But the overall style of the wine is very consistent. Good. Well, that's that's good. Well, let's take a quick break here. I'm having a great conversation with Jeffrey Patterson of, of Mount Eden Vineyards and Thank Domain uh, Eden. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some of these other beautiful wines and uh, what's inside them and the bottles on the outside. And we're going to touch base with some other topics. Uh, he has got a special, special project called the Tanaka Project. We want to talk to him uh, about the 2021 harvest, how it went, what, what things are looking like. and. What's in the, his vision? What he, what's he predicting for Mount Eden and, and Domain Eden in the next five years? We'll be right back.
thank you to the city of Monteserino for their continued support of KCAT Public Media. The city of Monteserino has enabled KCAT to inspire, educate, entertain, and inform our community through the magic of television and digital media for over 38 years. Thank you. We're back and we have two more bottles with us here. Jeffrey, you want to take us through which ones in your order and give so we'll us- We'll do the, 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 the Tanaka project first. Uh, Ron Tanaka was a, a Sacramento State English professor who befriended us in the 90s, in the early 1990s. And he, be kind, of, he kind of became our artist in residence, you might say. He loved to do art, various uh, photography, um, poetry, uh, paper cutouts, all, all kinds of different. Very uh, creative. Yeah, like very, very creative man. And um, he unfortunately committed suicide eventually. And, um, you know, it was a very sad time. And, and we've always kind of had Ron in the back of our minds because of his importance to us, you know. And he did all this art and poetry that focused on Mount Eden. So to kind of uh, celebrate his life, we decided to do this, which is uh, something we've never done before. Um, about 25% uh, or $25, I think, maybe 25% of the, of the sale price of the wine goes to uh, suicide prevention. Oh, great cause, great cause. Here in Santa Clara Valley. And uh, it's a small bottling. I, I, I select three barrels. I don't do it every year. I, I've done it now. I did it in 17. I did it in 19. I'll do it in 21 vintage. Uh, so every other year, basically. And it's uh, about 75 cases. Uh, and it's three barrels that I like. You know, It's I, a Pinot. You know, it's a Pinot Noir okay. from our state vineyards. Okay. And it... Um, you know, it kind of gives awareness to the cause, and it's a really nice wine. In addition, is it, it's the regular Pinot Noir is a, an assemblage of all of our Pinot vineyards, which are about five in number, whereas this is only one vineyard, so it's rare in that respect. It's only a singular. You know, the three barrels come from only one vineyard. The Cabernet Sauvignon is. Um, a Bordeaux blend. It has. Uh, it, Tell it, our viewers and listeners what do you mean by a Bordeaux blend? So the on the on the front label of the wine is the what we call in French the cépage. So it's eighty percent Cabernet Sauvignon, fifteen percent Merlot, three percent Cabernet Franc, and two percent Petit Verdot. So that's that's kind of a what on the on the left bank of the of the river. Uh, in Bordeaux, that's called a left bank blend. Um, predominantly it's primarily Cabernet, Cabernet, that's why it's... Primarily yeah. Cabernet Sauvignon, okay. and that's why it has Cabernet on the label. But um, we make it... Um, it's become probably our most sought-after wine. It's unusual. There's... In California, if you, if you look at Cabernet Sauvignon production, there's only two wineries in the entire state of California, north or south, that grow this type of wine, a state bottled, Cabernet blend, or a Bordeaux blend, serious, ageable, long history of production on the coastal mountain range at elevation two, Mount Eden and Ridge. Ridge, yeah. And we're neighbors, we're not close neighbors, but we see, we see each other. <laughs> They're on the mountain to the north. I'm on the mountain to the south. So it's interesting. So this is a cool climate Cabernet. It has a lot of the uh, kind of uh, Bordeaux kind of characteristics of high aromatics, low alcohol, long long lived wine that you know a Bordeaux wines are known for. So it stands out within the within the world of of, of Cabernet, which is really kind of Napa focused. Everyone thinks of Cabernet in California as being 
the model is Napa Valley. This is not Napa Valley. This is uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum. Lower alcohol, uh, more uh, high aromatics, um, uh, just a whole different, whole different world. That's you're, our camera. You're not succumbing to the what I'll call Robert Parker wine. No, the, the fruit bombs of the '80s and '90s. No. No. This is very traditional and classic. We, we've never embraced Parker. For whatever reason, I'm kind of glad. <laughs> well, Bob, if you're listening, you know, you're a big guy. You can handle this. You can handle this. Uh, well, so if it's a traditional Bordeaux, yeah. give me some classic food pairings uh, that's really just going to make it, make it sing here. Cabernet, because it has a high level of tannin, I've always felt that the, the perfect marriage has a lot of animal fat, so red meats with a lot of fat typically work well because tannin uh, and animal fat kind of have a nice synergy, you know, on the palate. Yeah, so yeah, it's a red meat wine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Any other possibilities on with the cabernet? With the cabernet. Well, it depends on how how early you drink it, you know. Uh, I'm, you know, kind of a spoiled child. I, I drink them old. <laughs> let, them, so, let them smooth out with some <laughs> so, balance. You know, I, 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 I drink them with risotto. I drink them, I drink them with uh, pasta dishes. I drink them with poultry. I don't drink them with fish. Um, but I drink them with a wide variety of foods, typically. Yeah. Okay. Well, but, 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 the, but the best combination is with serious red meat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me go into another area because I'm getting way too hungry listening to you. <laughs> uh, Domain Eden, kind of, sort of, made some history, and there's a connection between that winery, your wine uh, that you made, uh, and the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Is that correct? That's true. Give us the backstory. So, so. Um, about a week after the, that wedding occurred, there was an article published in the, in the London Times. And the writer kind of chronicled the, the, the dishes for the, for the wedding dinner. Before the wedding occurred, Harry and uh, uh, his wife uh, said, we're gonna choose two wines for dinner, just two. We're gonna choose an old world and a new world wine. They didn't say anything more than that. And that's all they said. It was kind of a, an aside. It wasn't a big deal. So uh, all these California wineries were kind of, you know, vying for, you know, is it us? Yeah. <laughs> Are we on the list? Yeah. <laughs> no one knew. And our, our importer, it was based in London, said, this is long after this all occurred. He said, yeah, we got this big order like a 10 case order for uh, your domain Pinot Noir to an address that didn't have any kind of, you know, alarm to it. It was just significance an, or it was just an address yeah, in yeah, somewhere yeah. in London. It wasn't, you know, the Windsor, you know, castle. And uh, lo and behold, for the red wine, they chose our domain Eden 2014 Pinot Noir. Wow. And for the white wine, it was a white burgundy from Olivier Le Fleuve. Wow. Yeah, not, not a very fancy wine, but, but, but good, you know, good. So yeah, it was, it was a big uh, publicity thing, and we had nothing to do with it. I mean, it was totally serendipitous. You know, this wasn't a secret mission by uh, James Bond or no, anybody else to come up no. with getting this. Sean okay. Connery was not involved. <laughs> <laughs> or our current one, yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, you know, or, or Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. Well, I do want to give a shout out to you because timing is everything. Uh, thank you for being here today. But a few weeks ago, and you may have known about this, but the San Francisco Chronicle had the 2022 25 top best wineries in the uh Bay Area, yeah. uh, Northern California, to visit, and you were in it, and you were only one of two uh, in the Santa Cruz Mountains AVA. Uh -huh. The Ridge was the other one. Yeah. Uh, but hats off to you, and uh, they were absolutely nailed it on the article. The stunning views, the stunning wine, 
the history with with the winery and they really liked just what you've already said today the consistency and balance and making wines that are that last yes they don't have a short shelf life and no. they, they evolve and and evolution is good and and, and progression so, so 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 hats off to you thank you let's talk about the most recent vintage the 2021 give us a brief summary of how did it go any big surprises no wildfires thankfully no no smoke but w- were there still challenges as there are in any any harvest so, so the biggest challenge about 2021 was rain okay so every year we we have a rain log because we're dry farmed all of our vineyards are dry farmed except for when they're planted but after they're established they're what we call dry farm it's just whatever mother nature provides they're not they're not irrigated so we really worry about the, about rain you know every year usually not enough and in 21 20 was a drought year 21 was the most severe drought year we have ever rec- our rain logs go back 70 years and we've never had a uh, a rain year like 21 with so little we had 14 inches of rain total normally we have 35 we had 14 inches so i'm pulling my hair out thinking what am i going to do you know what's going to happen i mean you know are the grapes going to ripen you know do we have enough water to get to get them through this and I was totally expe- totally expecting a very, very small crop. And the Chardonnay and Pinot Noir yielded above normal. You mean it in volume? Yeah. Totally surprised me. The Cabernet yielded way, way down, uh, which was what I expected. But um, still, it was a very confusing result. But it was my, but my primary... Uh, concern in 21 was just the fact that we had so little water during the winter. This year is better. We're up to over 25 this year. Um, but um, it, it was actually a nice vintage. You know, the, the disease pressure was very low because it didn't rain during the spring. So the mildew pressure, which is always a, a concern, was very, 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 yeah. very, very minimal. Um, and the, the crop didn't ripen super early. It, 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 it wasn't late, but it wasn't super, super early, which was what I, again, what I was expecting. So it was actually a very good vintage. The wines um, in, this, in the barrel, they're all in the barrel now, um, very concentrated, which is what you'd expect from a drought year. Very big wines, very forceful, you know, uh, emphatic. Um, they, they taste good. I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy. Will I'm, the Chardonnay be the first one to go into the bottle? Yeah, so we typically will bottle Chardonnay in June um, of the previous vintage. Cabernet Sauvignon of the, of the previous second. Or the, so it's, it's two years old. Two years back. Two okay. years old. So that'll be next in the month of July. And then in August, before harvest, we'll do the Pinot Noir which will be the, the, from the previous year's vintage. Uh, vintage. But yeah, 21, I, I, in talking to other winemakers about 21, I think everyone's pretty happy. And I think everyone's surprised it's, that it's as good as it is. And on top of that, in 20, we had all these forest fires and everyone was, a lot of wineries in Santa Cruz Mountains that were more closer to the fires in, in Ben Loman and Boulder Creek. They didn't make any wine. They they couldn't do anything. They couldn't even. They didn't make. They didn't well. even. They didn't even pick the grapes. Um, so we were lucky. We we kind of skirted that problem in twenty. So there was no forest fire pressure, which was great. That was a big a big relief. Yeah, but yeah, twenty one I think is surprisingly good. I mean, given the fact that it was such a severe drought, the wines are pretty strong. Well, you sound pleased with the early returns let's put it that way so far so good well, good good <laughs> well tell our viewers and listeners where what's the best way to get hold of your lovely wines is it go to the winery go on get in a wine club with you go online go to a a, a store uh, obviously whether it's big 
yeah. small or medium? What, what are all the platforms that are best for you? So the, so the best serious wine store that our wines are at is called K&L. They're in Redwood City. Okay. Uh, outside of that, there are not that many stores left. So uh, the, um, the kind of more uh, gourmet markets that carry our wines are uh, Lenardi's and Draeger's. Okay. A little bit of wine is sold at Safeway. The, it, it, it's not a wine that we have on the table here, but it's a, it's a Chardonnay we make from Edna Valley. That's at Safeway. And then uh, the easiest, most convenient, is just to go online and order from our website. Okay. Yeah. And we do quite a bit of business there. And when you order and get the bottles from your own winery, they haven't been transported no. in a truck. They no. Haven't, they haven't been exposed to no. sunlight or, or artificial light. No, or they come right, for, right from our so library. It's going to be, knock on wood, in perfect condition. It should be. Good. It should be, yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Last area question. What's the vision, hope, expectation, whatever of where Mount Eden and Domain Eden are going to be in five years. What, what do you anticipate? What do you want, want to happen? Including your, your own involvement. <laughs> so my, my two children, um, my daughter is 37 and my son just turned 30. So my son is involved in wine, in kind of uh, the uh, general managership of, of the production side of the, of the company. And my daughter is involved in sales and marketing of the company and they seem to be happy they're working full-time so you know over the next five years you know i'll slowly slowly step away you know i'll, I'll be there to help but i won't be necessarily responsible for everything i've been responsible for for the last 40 years so that's that, that's my vision and i i am hoping that everything goes well and they continue to be happy and satisfied and i mean it's a good it's a good family business you know We'll have you back in five years, All if right. not earlier, to find out how it's going, what <laughs> okay. your predictions have come true. Well, Jeffrey Patterson, thank you so much for being here. You, it's been an absolute, absolute pleasure. And, you know, talking all about all this wine, looking at it, I think I'm going to go home and open a bottle tonight. All right. All right. Thanks again. <laughs> thank you, man. Good to see you. Likewise.